ఐ ఎం జయవన్న మౌనిక లెక్చరర్ ఇన్ ఫిజిక్స్ గవర్నమెంట్ డిగ్రీ కాలేజ్ చిందలపూడి నవ్ ఐఎమ్ డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ హైసన్ బాక్స్ అన్సర్టెంటీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ అన్సర్టెంటీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఆల్సో కాల్ హైసన్ బర్గ్ అన్సర్టెంటీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఆర్ ఇంటర్ ఇంటర్మెన్సీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ స్టేట్మెంట్ ఆర్టికులేటెడ్ బై ద జర్మన్ ఫిజిస్ట్ వెర్నర్ హైసన్ బర్ దట్ ద పొజిషన్ అండ్ ద వెలాసిటీ ఆఫ్ అన్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ కెనాట్ బోత్ బీ మెజర్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ at the same time even in theory matter and photons are waves implying they are spread out over some distance what is the position of a particle such as an electron is it at the center of the wave the answer lies in how we measure the position of an electron experiments show that you will find the electron at some definite location unlike a wave but if we set up exactly the same situation and measure it again we will find the electron in a different location often far outside any experimental uncertainty in our measurement repeated measurements will display a statistical distribution of locations that appears wave like after de broglie proposed the wave nature of matter many physicists including schrodinger and heisenberg explored the consequences the idea quickly emerged that because of its wave character a particle's trajectory and a destination cannot be precisely predicted for each particle individually for example we can measure the position of a moving electron by scattering light or other electrons from it those probes have momentum themselves and by scattering from the electron they change its momentum in a manner that loses information there is a limit to absolute knowledge even in principle it was werner heisenberg who first stated the this limit to knowledge in 1929 as a result of his work on quantum mechanics and the wave characteristics of all particles Simul- specifically consider simultaneously measuring the position and momentum of an electron there is an uncertainty in position that is approximately equal to the wavelength of the particle as discussed above a wave is not located at one point in space if the electron's position is measured repeatedly the spread in locations will be observed implying an uncertainty in position to detect the position of the particle we must interact with it such as having it collide with a detector in the collision the particle will lose momentum this change in momentum could be anywhere from close to zero to the total momentum of the particle it is impossible to measure both the position and momentum of particle simultaneously there is an uncertainty in position let us say delta x that is approximately equal to the wavelength of the particle that is lambda x is nearly equal to the wavelength there is uncertainty in momentum say delta p in fact the uncertainty in momentum may be as large as the momentum itself it is indicated as delta p is nearly equal to h into lambda the uncertainty in position can be reduced by using a shorter wavelength electron since delta x is nearly equal to lambda but shortening the wavelength increases the uncertainty in momentum since momentum is is equal momentum equal to h divided by lambda conversely the uncertainty in momentum can be reduced by using a longer wavelength electron but this increases the uncertainty in position mathematically we can express this trade off by multiplying the uncertainties the wavelength cancels leaving delta x into delta p is nearly equal to h it shows the product of the uncertainty in position and the uncertainty in momentum is nearly equal to the planck's constant value
Heisenberg showed that the best that can be done in simultaneous measurement of position and momentum is product of delta x and delta p is greater than or equal to h divided by 4 pi. The product of the uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum is can never be smaller than the h by 4 pi. This is known as the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Neither uncertainty can be zero, neither uncertainty can become small with, without the other becoming large. A small wavelength allows accurate position measurement but it increases the momentum of the probe to the point that it further disturbs the momentum of a system being measured. For example, if an electron is scattered from an atom and has a wavelength small enough to detect the position of electrons in the atom, its momentum can knock the electrons from their orbits in a manner that loses information about their original motion. It is therefore impossible to follow an electron in its orbit around an atom. If we measure the electron's position, we will find it in a definite location but the atom will be disrupted. Repeated measurements on identical atoms will produce interesting probability distributions for electrons around the atom but they will not produce motion information. The probability distributions are referred to as electron clouds or orbitals. There is another form of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle for simultaneous measurements of energy and time. They are the product of the uncertainty in energy and the uncertainty in time is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi where delta E is the uncertainty in energy and delta T is the uncertainty in time. There is another form of Heisenberg uncertainty principle simultaneous measurements for of total angular momentum and angle. It is represented as the product of uncertainty in total angular momentum and uncertainty in angle can never be smaller than h by 4 pi where delta j is the uncertainty in total angular momentum and delta theta is the uncertainty in angle. Ordinary experience provides no clue of this principle. It is easy to measure both the position and, vel and the velocity of say an automobile because the uncertainties implied by this principle for ordinary objects are too small to be observed. The complete rule stipulates that the product of the uncertainties in position and velocity is equal to or greater than a tiny physical quantity or constant h by 4 pi where h is Planck's constant is about 6.625 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Only for the exceedingly small masses of atoms and subatomic particles does the product of the uncertainties become significant. To measure the position and momentum on a, of an electron, shine light on electron and detect reflected light using a microscope. And minimum uncertainty in position is given by the wavelength of the light. So, to determine the position accurately, it is necessary to use light with a short wavelength. By Planck's law, E is equal to h c by lambda, a photon with a Short wavelength has a large energy, thus it would impart a large kick to the electron. But to determine its momentum accurately, electron must only be given a small kick. This means using light of long wavelength. To measure accurate position, we should use light with shorter wavelength but not momentum. To measure accurate momentum, we should use light with long wavelength but not position. The implications of this principle is it is impossible to know both the position and momentum exactly that is delta x is 0 and delta p is 0. These uncertainties are inherent in the physical world and have nothing to do with the 
skill of the observer because h value is so small these uncertainties are not observable in normal everyday situations thank you